Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 46th short for space exploration, science, and technology. Virgin Orbit launched its Launcher 1 rocket to orbit for the first time today as part of its Demo 2 demonstration mission that carried the Elena 20 cluster of nine small sats to low Earth orbit on behalf of NASA. It was probably a make or break milestone for the Virgin Galactic spin off, and the first time the company has shown that a commercial air launch is possible. Northrop Grumman's Pegasus rocket has already performed a number of air launches, but at a cost of about $75 million to $100 million per launch, with federal defense contractor style program management. Virgin is selling launches at about $13 million per full payload. The flight was dedicated to Eve Branson, Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit founder Richard Branson's mother. She died only nine days earlier due to complications from COVID-19. She was 96. Sir Branson's father, Edward, died in 2011 at age 93. This is the second attempt at reaching orbit for Virgin Orbit after a first try in late May ended with the Launcher 1 rocket initiating an automatic safety shutdown of its engines shortly after detaching from the Cosmic Girl carrier aircraft, a modified Boeing 747 that transports the rocket to its launch altitude. As a contrast, Northrop Grumman first used a B-52 bomber and then a Lockheed L-111 TriStar jumbo jet. The Demo-2 launch took an additional importance to Virgin Orbit when NASA declined the company's offer to have the flight use a test payload rather than the contract payload to give the agency more confidence in Virgin Orbit's technology. After reviewing the Demo-1 launch investigation data and the remediation plan, NASA insisted on launching the Elena-20 SmallSat payload on the Demo-2 launch. The payload consisted of nine scientific CubeSats. Virgin's Cosmic Girl took off at just before 2 p.m. Eastern and then released Launcher 1 from its wing at roughly 2.40 p.m. Launcher 1 had a clean separation as intended and then ignited its rocket engines and lifted into space, thereupon separating from the payload, which ignited its own engines and then continued into orbit. The Launcher 1 booster is not designed to land on Earth on its own propulsion and is not recovered. The final stage achieved orbit at around 2.49 p.m. Eastern and released its payload of small satellites at about 3.19 p.m. The successful flight of Launcher 1 comes eight months after the failed initial attempt in May of 2020. Only seconds after release, the rocket's engine developed an anomaly and the Demo-1 mission was terminated. The post-launch investigation revealed the cause of the failure to be a breach in the high-pressure line carrying locks to the first stage combustion chamber. Without a supply of oxidizer, that engine shut down and the mission was aborted. Virgin Orbit did not reveal why the specific part that failed was not discovered in earlier static fire tests. Our educated guess is that the vibration imparted to the rocket during the Demo-1 carrier flight was not effectively simulated in a ground-based fixed test fire stand. Once the Demo-1 investigation was completed, the launch Demo-2 was green-lighted, originally for December of 2020, just before Christmas. The rocket Virgin Orbit used for launch Demo-2 shipped out of the factory in late August, after making the short trip up to Mojave Air and Spaceport, that rocket was fitted to a test stand built to emulate the 747 carrier aircraft's left wing. There, the rocket underwent a cryogenic fueling test, similar to the procedure SpaceX puts its Starship prototypes through in Boca Chica. No problems surfaced during the test. In September, the company test fired the Newton 3 engine that was to be used for the launch Demo 2 first stage. Again, no problems surfaced during the test and it took only two weeks to certify the engine for the upcoming launch. Both the rocket and engine were returned in October to Virgin Orbit's Long Beach headquarters for final integration. And there, the Newton 4 upper stage engine was installed along with the boost stage engine in the rocket, and the fully assembled rocket underwent final tests. Virgin Orbit has a seven launch manifest following January 17th's NASA launch. It includes three from the US Space Force, one for GOM Space, one for Sky and Space Global, one for Cloud Constellation, and four for OneWeb. The U.S. Space Force is expected to use the first of its three rockets as a technology demonstrator. None of the seven launches are scheduled as of the date of this video. Before we go over Virgin Orbit's business prospects, we wanted to see if you are enjoying this 46th installment of our series of shorts. If so, click that like button. Did you think the Demo 2 flight of Launcher 1 validates the technology and Virgin Orbit's business model? Go ahead and share with us but drop me a comment below. If you are not a subscriber yet, please take a moment to click the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. The first major YouTube milestone is at 10,000 subscribers, and we are doing everything we can to get to that mark. 
Help us out by becoming a subscriber, and we will be sure to continue delivering great content to you. And clicking the bell notification icon will make sure you are notified when new episodes are released. Virgin Orbit has received some criticism from pundits over burning $1 billion of capital since 2017. In comparison, Rocket Lab has only spent $180 million in development of its rocket since 2006 and is actively delivering payloads to orbit. One industry observer thought that Virgin Orbit would need to conduct hundreds of launches to make its money back. A company spokesperson responded to the chatter by insisting its launch technology provided customers flexibility not found at Rocket Lab or with Northrop Grumman's Pegasus Air Launch System. Virgin Orbit's value proposition in the small launch market is that it can take off and land from traditional runways and does not have to struggle for launch windows and ground-based launch complexes, as do other spacecraft companies. In addition to timing flexibility, air launches should provide flexibility in terms of launch locations, allowing it to be more responsive to customer needs in terms of geographies and target orbital deliveries. Branson suggested in 2020 that another $200 million in funding would still be required for Virgin Orbit to get fully ready for commercial and government launches. The Wall Street Journal reported the previous October that CEO Dan Hart confirmed that the company was soliciting $200 million in funding from outside investors. The funding raise would value the company at $1 billion. Branson, despite his estimated $4.1 billion net worth, has shown little interest in putting more money into Virgin Orbit himself. His former companies that comprise a significant portion of his fortune have their own problems. The conglomerate Virgin Group had to float $480 million in special purpose shares to raise investment capital in October of 2020. And Virgin Atlantic Airways had to borrow $1.5 billion to avoid bankruptcy, a deal that included the sale of a 10% stake in Virgin Galactic, the other Branson space venture focusing on tourism. That sale downgraded Branson to minority owner status. Virgin Galactic went public via SPAC merger in 2019 at a valuation of $2.2 billion. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook and Minds page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.